My name is Azucena and I'm going to present a part of my PhD, Measuring Recent Gene Flow Among Large Populations in Pinocell Vestries. Local pollen shedding does not preclude substantial long-distance pollen immigration. The objective of this study is to estimate recent gene flow rates among two big natural Scots pine populations. We hypothesize that there must have been substantial recent gene flow among the two populations, given the high pollen movement levels reported in this species and the typically low reproductive barriers among core specific pine populations. To achieve our goal, we measure recent among population gene flow rates using a Bayesian approach based on uniparentally inherited markers that account for haplotype frequency estimation uncertainty. This approach may be of interest to monitor contemporary gene flow among big forest populations, either to quantify allotonous introgression, natural gene flow, etc. We focus here on two natural Scots pine populations in Sierra de Ayllón, central Spain. They grow in contrasting edaphic conditions, while the, wild, while the one at Campis Avalos is on calcareous dolomitic soils, the Galve de Sorbe one is on siliceous slate quartzite soils. Despite being at relative close distance, about six kilometers away, allowing potentially high levels of gene flow, they show substantial quantitative genetic differentiation in early survival, phenological, and growth traits at provenance trials. Several scattered planted stands of unknown but presumably local origin were introduced around and within the two natural stands. We collected a needle tissue from a total of 800 adult trees, 200 from calcareous and siliceous, and 400 from the plantations, keeping a minimum separation distance of 30 meters between individual trees. We additionally sampled 400 young individuals across the two natural populations, 200 offspring from calcareous and siliceous. Sampled offspring varied from a few years to a couple of decades. We extracted DNA from each of the total 1,200 samples. They were genotyped at six chloroplast microsatellites following the PCR amplification protocols. Amplifier fragments were separated using an AV genetic analyzer and fragment sizes were determined using the software GeneMapper. We used an original Bayesian inference model that jointly estimates population haplotypic frequencies and pairwise migration rates among a set of populations. The model approximates the joint posterior distribution of migration rates and haplotypic frequencies based on the likelihoods of observed adult and offspring haplotypic counts. Point estimates and 95% credibility intervals of parameters were then obtained as the median and the 0.025 and 0.975 percentiles of the posterior distribution. Finally, we used Monte Carlo simulations to calculate the expected bias, root mean square error, and credibility interval non-coverage rate of immigration rate estimates under contrasting levels of assumed gene flow, given the actual sample sizes and the observed haplotypic frequencies in the real populations. Estimated, estimated haplotypic genetic diversity was similarly high across the calcareous and the siliceous natural stands, as well as across offspring cords. Although the larger sample size of the plantations resulted in a substantially higher observed numbers of haplotypes than in the rest of the samples, 
The difference largely disappeared after standardizing estimates to the minimum sample size. FST estimates were very small and not significantly different from zero for any sample pair, constrained by high within population haplotypic diversity. Estimates of just index, which reflect the similarity in population haplotypic frequencies independently of a within population diversity, were substantially larger, but because of their large variance, only the maximum estimate between silicious adults and calcareous offspring was significantly different from zero. The Bayesian model estimates indicated substantial gene exchange between the two natural populations. The estimated proportion of offspring of the calcareous population shared by fathers from the silicious populations was about 7%, while the estimated proportion of offspring of the silicious population sired by fathers from the calcareous population was 21%. Both estimates were significantly different from zero, um, although with wide credibility intervals. Gene flow estimates from the plantations into the natural populations were larger, with 64 and 42% of offspring in the calcareous and the silicious populations, respectively, sired by fathers from planted stems. Assuming simulated adult and offspring sample sizes and adult haplotypic frequencies matching the empirical ones, simulations results indicated that the Bayesian model produced male gametic gene flow estimates with generally low biases, assuming gene flow rates from 0 to 60% from the two natural and the planted populations. Expected estimation errors were similar for gene flow rates into the calcareous and the silicious populations. Without any gene flow, the model produced positive gene flow rate estimates of about 3% from every SARS population. These residual bias, positive bias, were null for gene flow rates tended, tended to increase up to maximum values of 5-8% when gene flow from some populations remain null while being increasingly large from others. Biases decreased with increasing gene flow rates and were minimal in these scenarios with some gene flow from every source population. Overall, the model properly discriminated unequal levels of gene flow from different source populations, including scenarios with gene flow between the two natural stands but not from the plantations and the reverse. The last simulated scenario assumed gene flow values similar to the ones estimated empirically. The results show rather small biases as for the previous scenarios with non-gene flow from every source population. Results from the present study suggest that Local pollen shedding within large tree populations does not preclude long distance pollen immigration from other large populations. We found indeed greater proportions of recruits sired by non local than by local males in the two study stands. Several hypotheses could explain this issue. First, effective pollen immigration might have been intensified if non-local grains had arrived when local female strobili were receptive, but local male strobili were still immature. Second, the large male gametic immigration rates could have resulted from gene flow from widespread and sampled external sources extended beyond the steady area, as the used method tends to perceive gene flow from unsampled external sources 
as gene flow from sample external sources. Our results draw attention to a potential air scenario of adaptive genetic divergence under high gene flow. To the extent that historical gene flow between the two natural stands had been as high as estimated for the recent reference time period, one bull in principle expected to have hampered adaptive genetic differentiation. However, common garden experiments have revealed differences between the two populations in seedling emergence, early seedling growth, phenology and survival of similar magnitude than pairs of Iberian provenances have hundreds of kilometers away. Several hypotheses could explain this issue. The differences in edaphic conditions are inducing divergent selection of such intensity to enable local adaptation despite hygiene flow. The maintenance of adaptive genetic divergence is being facilitated because lifetime selection reduce effective gene flow rates among the two populations relative to the high values estimated for our young recruit cohort. The two study populations have not reached migration selection balance, having genetically diverged in a spatial and reproductive isolation and coming into their present day proximity only recently. The level of genetic divergence between the two study populations reported in the literature might have been inflated by maternal effects, which is known to affect especially early offspring performance. Further perspectives. Larger samples than 1,200 individuals would probably have further reduced gene flow rate estimation errors, in particular the residual positive bias expected without gene flow. Observational estimates of population flowering phenology overlap could be combined in the model with haplotypic likelihoods to explore the relative effects of a spatial versus phenological distances on among population, gene flow intensity and direction. Reciprocal transplant experiments could be used to assess local adaptation and substrate driving selection patterns on seedling from each of the two natural stands and whether relative fitness measures are age dependent. Potential maternal effects could be considered in such experiments by measuring individual seed weights and by growing offspring source over multiple years from the same mother trees. And that's all. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>